Hello, everybody. It is Friday night, which means Friday night lights are back, which means it is time to talk a little bit of high school football. I'm Allison Posey. He is Dom Tibbetts, and this is Friday night overtime. It sure is, and we've got a lot of games to get to tonight. Uh, we sure do, starting with a rivalry made on State Road 51. Lafayette and Hamilton County High Schools are about 45 minutes apart, both 1A programs in the state of Florida. Mayo looking for their second straight victory. Hamilton County opening up the season tonight. It's our Friday night overtime game of the week. Both teams Fired up for this one, AP, but check this out. Hamilton County pulling out all the stops. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's a mini Trojan a horse. Mini horse! Look how cool that oh, is. Oh, so cute. Absolutely adorable. Starting this one in the first quarter, Hornets driving. Mario Thomas delivering a strike to Carlos Murphy over the middle for the big gain in the first down. Nothing comes of it. Trojans with possession, trying to create some offense. They keep it on the ground for Jaquan Strouder. He'll bust out the moves, there breaking some tackles left okay. and right. Spin move, no gain, with big gain, but no points on that drive. That's because the Lafayette defense standing tall. Check out Ooh. Thomas. Huge hit on Jeremiah oh, Gibson. CTE that is calling. stops the Trojan drive dead in its tracks. But Hamilton County would get some revenge. Hornets driving late in the first, but the snap goes way into the backfield. It's a fumble. Oh. La Lafayette scoops it, saves the drives, but they would eventually punt. All the scoring done in the second half of this one, folks. Lafayette winners 21 to nothing. I knew we weren't there. <laughs> Let's stick with small school football. Isn't that how it always is? Jefferson County lost a close one last week to Trenton, taking on Port St. Joe. Tiger Sharks score during the first possession night, going for two here, and Andrew Shepard, Colin Amison, LaJohn Sicario Jr. almost taking on our cameraman. It's 8-0. Jefferson County remaining scoreless. Look, poor St. Joe looking deep. Javarius Hawkins, he's going to take there it all the goes. way to the house. Look at this man go. Take it back to the Port St. Joe 30-yard line. Jefferson County trying to make another big defensive play. Port St. Joe's Joe Prince Jones will run it back. He's stopped by the force by Hawkins again. A tough night for Jefferson County. They fall 36 to nothing. Uh, Sneeds, a 1A state final four team a season ago, hosting Arnold tonight. Opening drive. Sneeds looking to establish the run game. Jason Patterson with the handoff, drags a couple of defenders with him for the first down. Same drive. Patterson gets it again. This time Ooh, getting outside. The bulldozer. The tackles trucking a defender. I call him a Tonka. Two more across the line. Touchdown, Pirates. There would be a blocked extra point, so it's 6 nothing. Didn't take long for Sneeds to get the ball back, and well, if it worked the first time, why change things? They broke, don't fix it. Breaking loose, and it's a foot race. Sophomore showing that he can be a bruiser and a speedster. An 80-yard run and another touchdown. This would never be much of a contest. Sneeds rolling easy, 53-16. to Thomasville Bulldogs 2-0 on the year and riding high after last week's Rose City rivalry win over Thomas County Central. The Dogs with another rivalry game this week. They're battling Cairo for the syrup pitcher. The Bulldogs, the current holder of the pitcher, Thomasville leading the all-time series 42-26, but it's Cairo who'd strike first tonight. Mid-second quarter, Xavier Grant finds a seam up the gun, and there he's he in. Cairo leads 7-0, but they weren't done there later. Cairo strikes again. It's like a great movie title. This time, it's Amari and Burden finding the pay dirt. Cairo leads 14 to nothing. but the Dogs, they would find life just before the second half, or before the first half ended, excuse me. Shannon White with the time going downfield to Joseph Williams. Oh, he's all alone for pause. six. Cairo led 21-6 at the break. This one, all dogs in the second half, though. They scored 20 unanswered points. Thomasville winners 26 21. Keeping the pitcher, firing up the grill at Thomas County Central. Oh, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. I didn't need Looking to see that. Down this week. Hosting Lake Placid, not a good start tonight for the Jackets. First play from scrimmage. Samuel Brown picked off by Weston. Howard returns it all the way to the two yard line. Lake Placid would score a couple of plays later, and it's 6 0. TCC, great field position off a great kick return. Very next play. Brown tucks it and he runs it to his right. Breaking a shoestring tackle. Picks up a couple downfield blocks and he is That's in. That's how fast I'd be running to those strike. hamburgers. Me too. Jackets lead 7-6. Still in the first. Following a block punt. Brown going back to the air. This time Trey Hewitt in the back of the Ooh, end zone. The hauling it in. Jackets led 14-6 at that point. They cruise 50 
to six. Well, let's keep the ball rolling, shall we? Rounding out the Thomasville trifecta of teams. Brookwood welcoming in McClay from across the state line. Marauders up 14-7, second quarter. Big play from the defense. Eli Harrell picks off Raj Waldrop, and he's got a convoy leading him into the end zone. There but the touchdown is going to get called back no! for defensive holding. No! So McClay, third attempt from inside the five-yard line, stuffed by the Brookwood defense. Marauders settle for a field goal and they extend their lead 17-7. Under a minute left in the second quarter, Warriors just enough time to take a shot at the end zone. Waldrop finds his tight end, Grant Gatson, for the 30-yard touchdown. Warriors trailed 17-14 in the half, but McClay goes on to win 34-27. Hey, cheerleaders, take us to break. Welcome back to Friday Night Overtime. The Lincoln Trojan Band, our band of the week. Little Foo Fighter classic there, too. Good choice. Oh, it's always a great choice. Can't go wrong. We'll get to the Trojans in just a bit, but let's stay in Georgia. Let's do it. Colquitt County back at MacThart Stadium this week looking for a big win after falling short last week. Saints quarterback Jabari Cleckley rolling to the right, and he throws, and the Packers safety Lee Thomas picking off the ball. Colquitt County. Uh, Williams throwing a swing pass to Charlie Pace. Pace cutting up the field, picks up the first down for the Packers. The Saints going to be back on offense here, and they're not done yet. Jumping into the end zone for a touchdown for the Saints. The Packers would end, the, end up winning this one 28-19, though, so big win for the Pack. Much needed there, and the Pelham Hornets at home against Cook. Cook decided to kick it to Pelham's Eric Richardson. Yeah, and uh, I think Cook's going to learn the hard way. That's not the right thing to do here. The ball <laughs> bounces behind Richardson and the Cook, and the Hornets swarm and tackle him at the three-yard line. So I guess oh. I stand corrected. Yeah, they get him. The Cook, they, they defied me wrong there. So here we go, third and eight. Pelham's Hornets quarterback, Zane Touchton. He's going to throw out to Jalen Jackson. He makes two defenders miss. Yee, skirt, move there out of the goes. way. Gets the first down. Then on the very next play, Nathaniel Walker takes the handoff, makes a corner miss, and he runs in 35 yards for the first down. But the Cook Hornets, they won this game 24-20, your final. There you go. Moving back down to Florida, and the Florida High Seminoles off to a dominant start to the season, 2-0 on the year. Big wins over Thomas County Central, and then Godby last week on the road for the first time this season, though, facing Gadsden County. The Jaguars taking on the Seminoles at home, looking for a win. Top of the second quarter here. Kellen Minchuin dropping back, looking for Brooks Hickman. Number 19, he catches it on the side there, runs straight towards the end zone. But guess what, Dom? This, What's that, Allison? This doesn't count. Oh, brother! <laughs> the flag is against the offense. Someone tell these refs to chill. Coming back. Next drive for the Jags. Shantarius Thomas hands it off to John Terrius Thomas. Tries to get away. A little bit of loss of yards there in the following play. John Terrius Thomas gets it again and still not much on that drive. First half tied at zero, Florida high. Turns it on in the second, though, of course, when we're not there. 28 nothing. Go figure, score. right? Well, let's see the Monroe Bobcats. They open up the season with a shutout victory over FAMU DRS hosting Chipley tonight. First quarter, Tigers turn it over, and R.J. Payne Jr., he's going to run it into the end zone. The there Cats put six points on the board. Then after the Bobcats go for two, Keyshawn Mashburn is going to get through the defense. Eight-nothing lead for the Bobcats, and it wasn't over. Next drive, Joshua Brown, he's going to keep it himself. Runs down the middle, barrels through some defenders, makes it look easy. Two-point attempt, no good. Monroe with another shutout, wins 16-0, your final. And we heard from the Trojan marching band earlier. Let's hear from those Trojans from Lincoln at home tonight. The inner city matchup against the Godby Cougars. The Lincoln faithful showing up loud and proud Student tonight. Section. A lot to cheer about early. Trojans up 27-7. Godby looking for the end zone but they're going to find two Trojans instead. That's not good in the game of football, no. folks. Derek Thompson swinging, takes this one away. Little ground in the other direction. There and that they're one. fighting over the ball. Same team. Yeah, uh, you, you got you, the interception. Come on. Support your teammate. Get out there and block now. Yeah. Safety on the first snap after that pick two puts Gabby in direction, but here comes the Trojans. Javon Petway, what a catch for the oh. first down. 
And the next play to Perry Fisher, to Petaway, who is wide open. It's 33 to nine on the wide open connect. Gobby would fight back, Allison, but guess what? We weren't there. Lincoln holds on 40 to 37, however, the final. Uh, that seems to be the theme for the night. That way on the Lions on their home turf hosting FAMU DRS. Baby Rattlers down 3 0, looking to score. Amarion Wilson air mailing it to Amani Ankins. What a catch, and they would score a few plays later. Check this. Wilson, a little bit shifty on his feet, going right, Look at the, and then going left with it. It's 6 to 3. DRS. Some say Leon. that guy's ankles are still they on the field. Answer right back. Aja Freeman fighting his way, taken down inside the five yard line. And then Poot Shazir finishes on the next play. Lions on top. 10 to 3 after this touchdown. He had four rushing touchdowns on the night. Leon rolls 53 to 26. Swanee's supposed to be playing Santa Fe this week. COVID issues with their opponent acts that game, but the Bulldogs picking up with West Side. Second quarter, no score, but not for long. Wolverines into the red zone. Calhoun Walker barrels in the end zone for six. The goes. extra points are not always given, folks, here. A pack of Bulldogs come up to make the stop in this one. And Swanee, they'll steamroll West Side in the second half. 43 to 13, the final in that one. A lot of good games tonight, guys. Check it out all on the website, WTXL.TV. Watch it, share it. We love it. We'll see you next week.